How do you write a research proposal? How should you structure it? How much detail should you go into? Keep watching because in this video, I'm breaking all that down. If we've not met before, hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and here on my YouTube channel, I help PhD students get out of their own way and finish their doctorates. One of the things that can really hold people up with their PhDs is the PhD proposal itself. The thing that you submit with your application saying, here's the research I want to do, here's how I'm going to do it, here's why it should be done that way. I've known people delay applying for their PhD for literal years because they can't get their proposal together. So let's make sure that the proposal isn't a big stumbling block for you and you can get onto that doctoral program sooner rather than later. Before we get into it, if you're writing a PhD research proposal right now, you are going to find this super useful. It's my step-by-step -step guide to writing a research proposal. And essentially, I developed this because I wanted to help people stop procrastinating and start writing, like today. It walks you through the process of developing a research proposal, and it comes with a load of worksheets as well, so you can put your brilliant ideas and plans into those. The link's on the screen, and I'll pop it in the description for later as well. Okay, research proposals. Let's begin with the most important thing. Always refer to the university or college's specific guidance. Every educational institution is going to have its own preferences, its own quirks when it comes to research proposals. So you need to familiarize yourself with what those are before you even start writing anything. What I'm gonna share with you in this video is a general structure, which should work for most people, it should work for most institutions. You will take some useful stuff away from this video, but always check the instructions of the university or college you're applying to, because what they say overrides anything that I tell you in this video. Now, let's get into the four sections of a research proposal, starting with the introduction. This section is all about your research and why it matters. Start with a working title that's focused but flexible. It needs to be flexible because research can evolve, so don't lock yourself in. And this working title should very clearly identify a group of people, a specific issue or interest, and a context. Popping up on the screen right now is a sentence template that you can use for this. And here are some examples. This research explores international students' experiences of mental health challenges in UK higher education. This research explores middle-aged men's experiences of job insecurity within the tech industry. This research explores caregivers' experiences of managing work-life balance within rural communities. You also need to explain where the idea for your research came from. Is it based on previous studies or is there a real world issue that's driving it? You also need to make the research problem crystal clear. Don't assume that your reader will know. Spell it out, back it up with evidence. Next in the introduction, you need to outline your aims, your objectives and your research questions. The aims are what you want to achieve, the objectives are the steps you'll take to achieve the aims and the research questions are the guideposts, they're the things that keep you on track. I've got some other videos about aims and objectives and research questions, so I will link to one of them on the screen up here and I'll link to the others in the description. Lastly, in the introduction, you need to lay out who could benefit from your research and the kind of difference it could make. This is really useful in showing the potential impact of your work. So to use one of our examples, you might write something like this. If you're looking at middle-aged men's experiences of job insecurity in the tech industry, this research could benefit employers, career consultants, and policymakers by providing insights into middle-aged men's experiences of job insecurity in the fast-evolving tech industry. Understanding these experiences could lead to better support systems, including retraining programs and helping this group navigate career uncertainty. Academic foundations. Now this section is all about where your research fits in the academic landscape. First, lay out your research philosophy. This is your general approach to the project, your research paradigm. So, are you taking a positivist approach, an interpretivist approach, feminist, critical realist? What angle are you coming at this from? So be really clear about this because your philosophy will shape your entire approach. I go through some of the core research paradigms in my proposal pack, and there's also a quiz in there to help you figure out which paradigm is the most appropriate one for your research, just saying. Next up within academic foundations is the literature review. Now, depending on what your college or university is asking for, this might be a really brief overview or a slightly more detailed literature review. If they're after an outline literature review, you'll need to demonstrate a general familiarity with the literature around your topic. And you'll also need to include a plan 
as to how you'll review that in more detail if your proposal's accepted. If they want a more comprehensive literature review, this is gonna take you a bit longer because you're gonna to have to provide a summary of the knowledge, the theories, the literature in your area. And you might wanna sort that into headings or sections to really demonstrate your familiarity with that. But whatever you need to do in terms of a literature review, don't lose sight of the aim. And that is to identify the gap in the literature. What hasn't been explored yet? State this really clearly and explain how your research is going to fill that gap. Again, I go into much more detail about this in the research proposal guide, so go and check that out. Before we get on to the next section, I wanna hear from you in the comments. I'm really interested to know whether the doctoral program that you're applying to already has the research topic figured out for you and you just have to write a proposal to that, or whether you've got completely free reign and you're applying to programs where you've decided what that topic is. So type in the comments, predetermined topic, if that's already been decided by the institution, or my topic, if the topic is your choice. And I'm super nosy, so tell me a bit about your research topic too, because I just love geeking out on other people's research. It's just what I do. Next up, methodology. So this is about the how and the why. How are you going to do this piece of research and why are you going to do it this way? Start with your sample. Who or what will you include? How many people or cases? Where and when? The more specific, the better. Next, explain how you'll collect and analyze your data. And crucially, why these methods are the best choice. And always link your methods back to your aims and your philosophy. So to use one of our examples, if you're researching caregivers' experiences of managing work-life balance in rural communities, you might choose to do focus groups with 15 to 20 caregivers across the UK. And your justification for that might go something like this. Focus groups allow for a shared discussion of common struggles, fostering a collective understanding. This aligns with a community-based participatory research approach, which seeks to empower participants and give them a voice in shaping the research. So can you see how you've not only said what you're doing there, but also why you're doing it. Lastly, address ethical considerations too. What will you do to protect your participants' safety? What will you do to mitigate the risks of any harm coming to them? And don't forget to talk about your own well-being as well, especially if you're researching sensitive topics. <laughs> lastly, project management. Is your project realistic? In this section, you need to demonstrate that you've really thought through the practicalities how long will the research take? What resources will you need? Break your timeline down into stages using a Gantt chart if you can. Anticipate delays and potential risks. And risk management is key here. What could potentially go wrong and how would you handle it? What's your plan B? Whether it's delays in recruitment or challenges with getting ethical approval, make sure you have a plan in place. Make sure you have alternatives to turn to. This shows the person reading your proposal that you've thought ahead, that you're practical, that you're realistic. And these things are absolutely essential when it comes to PhD research. And don't forget to include a reference list. You would be amazed at the number of PhD proposals I've read that haven't had a reference list. It's something that can be quite easily overlooked in the chaos and sometimes the rush to get a research proposal in. So please make sure you've got one. And that it's in the format that the university wants. For more in-depth help, be sure to go and check out my research proposal guide and popping up on your screen right now is another video that you will find helpful if you are at the proposal writing stage. It's about how to develop a set of focus specific research questions. So go and check that out. I'll see you in there.